Our final award this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is the highest award the AEA bestows upon an individual. The AEA Lifetime Achievement Award, as nominated and voted on by the AEA Board of Directors, recognizes an individual who is retired and has devoted his or her career to the avionics industry and has indisputably distinguished themselves amongst their peers in the areas of vision for the industry, service to the AEA, support of the membership, and contributions to the general aviation electronics industry. Mr. Gary Kelly, Garmin International retired, is being recognized this morning by the AEA Board of Directors and in front of his peers for his countless hours of volunteerism for the association, including his service as a board member and his leadership in the AEA's Future Study Report, um, a strategic plan developed in the late 1990s. Gary retired from Garmin in December 2012 as the Vice President of Marketing after spending more than 20 years with Garmin. Under his leadership, Garmin was named the AEA Associate Member of the Year on three occasions, 1994, 2000, and 2011. Please turn your attention to the screen for a tribute to Mr. Gary Kelly. All pilots are taught to stay ahead of the aircraft, to look beyond their immediate situation, and try to anticipate what's likely to happen next. Some pilots, it seems, are able to carry this kind of vision, this forward thinking, over into their business careers. Take this year's AEA Lifetime Achievement Award honoree, for example. How many people do you know who could see the potential in a small electronics enterprise, then join that firm and help it grow into a large, world-recognized avionics company? It's a rare individual who can do that once, but Gary Kelly has done it twice starting with King Radio in 1972, and then, 20 years after joining King, making the jump to a little company called Garmin, and seeing it grow from a handful of people into a major pioneer in GPS navigation, communication, and information systems. So where did Gary get his passion for aviation and avionics? My mother was an accountant, and my dad, during the war, he led the effort at Pratt & Whitney. So there was always a great deal of talk and around the house about aircraft. That got me interested. And my dad had a very good friend that owned a Culver Cadet. And he would take me flying in it occasionally. I thought, this is God's gift to man. I graduated from high school and I told my dad that uh, I would like a uh, gift for my graduation. And he, I remember he was telling me, and so why would you deserve a gift? <laughs> and I said, no, Dad, I really would like to fly. I would like to learn to fly. And to my surprise, he said yes. What got me going beyond the private, I saw an ad in the Kansas City Star that said, United Airlines will pay you a million dollars to come fly for them. And I thought, holy, my God, they'll pay me? I thought, well, I gotta do this. So I went to my dad again, and I said, uh, I'd like to get my commercial license and instrument flight instructor and build my hours, get my college, and I wanna go to work for the airlines. I got my time, you know, and had jet experience, and I really wanted to work for Transworld Airlines. Then I heard on the news, TWA was furloughing pilots, and uh, I got a letter saying that I would be at the end of the furlough line before I would get in. And my dad again helped me, and when he said, uh, son, you need to get a real job. So I started watching the newspaper and I saw an ad for King Radio. I didn't care what it was, I just wanted to be in aviation. Over the course of two decades, Gary rose quickly through the managerial ranks of the King Radio and Bendix King organizations, becoming the Director of Marketing Administration in 1987. It was Gary who took charge of merging the separate King and Bendix marketing functions, integrating the two organizations with the aim of improving service and giving customers a seamless experience. Another challenge that fell to Gary was to design and implement a system 
that would allow for same-day shipment of an order placed during normal working hours. This, coupled with the industry's first 800 Watts line system, helped set the bar higher for Bendix King leadership and customer service. You what, what we got ingrained into us is that we needed to be involved, make a contribution to the industry, use your use whatever skills you were endowed with and, uh, and whatever resources uh, that you had available and, and try to make the place, make, try to make it better. And I, and I really do believe that uh, you can say that about Gary Kelly. And then in 1991, with the rapid advent of GPS technology for navigation, Gary was faced with another career challenge, this time from his friend, Gary Burrell, the GAR in Garmin. Gary hired me in 91, and, um, and I, I called him back. He was in San Francisco, and I said, Gary, I, I can't go through with it. And, you know, what was challenging to me at that time, I had two of my kids at KU, and uh, I was thinking, okay, we're going to work at this little bitty company. When Gary got back, he came out to the house, sat down with us, and he didn't work on me, he worked on Pam and Brian, my youngest son. So Gary, as normal, he is the most charming person you could, you could ever meet. And uh, so he hired me by convincing my family. And the rest, as they say, is history. Gary took on the role of Vice President of Marketing for Garmin and served in that role for the next two decades. During that time, he oversaw the development of Garmin Global Marketing, sales, product support, and advertising strategies. He established Garmin Europe early in 1992 and served on Garmin Europe's board of directors. In more recent years, Gary led the charge to bring Garmin Avionics into the larger Part 25 business jets. And through it all, Gary's passion for the business and the relationships he nurtured over the years were instrumental in moving Garmin from a small startup to a global provider of leading edge avionics systems. Gary also invested in the industry itself, serving on a number of boards and committees. And since his retirement from Garmin in 2012, Gary has also served on the advisory board of directors for Duncan Aviation. Gary's a wonderful man and we all know that. He's so easy to talk to and so easy to interact with and he knows our industry from top to bottom. Um, he spent a lifetime in our industry. He came from the King Radio background who believed in strong dealers and trying to help the dealer network maintain not only trained personnel, but uh, sales trained personnel. Dealing with Gary professionally was always a, uh, a really enjoyable uh, situation because you're in a tough business. We're trying to put avionics new innovative products into airplanes and we have to be tough on schedule and we have to be tough on cost. And at the end of the day, I'll, I have to publicly say this, they were always way too expensive and it always took too long. So Gary, I hope you appreciate that. But you know, he always made you feel pretty good about it and you always came back for more. Customer first, every time. And it, it didn't matter, you know, whether he's given a presentation to a, a dealer group or an OEM group or, or thinking about service parts or thinking about equipment or do we have enough stock and, and those sort of things. It's always customer first. The two companies I've worked for, uh, King and, and, and Garmin, and, and Gary is, and, and men were very much uh, the advocates for the product is everything. If you don't get the product right, your support won't be successful. The customers won't be happy with that product because it won't have the feature sets reliability. The expectation out there is that your systems work and never fail. Incredible products makes an incredible company. I, think I just really want to say thanks to Gary for all the guidance he gave me, uh, his mentoring style, uh, the ability to guide me down the career path that I've been on, and you know, it would never have happened without Gary Kelly there, and I just can't say thank you enough. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gary Kelly. Uh, 
uh, whoa. Uh, <clears throat> how do you, uh, you know, the speech I have here is, uh, after watching this, I, I don't know what else I have to say. There's just so fine people in this industry. I, I, I uh, and I'd like to recognize all of them, but Paula's got some <clears throat> green, yellow, red buttons up here, and I know that, uh, is that all? <laughs> no, <clears throat> but, you know, through my, my years, and by the way, I'm only going to talk about the last 40 years, Paula, so <laughs> it, this won't be all day for me. Um, through my career, uh, Joe mentioned it uh, earlier on, uh, one of the most important things to you is family. And I have the uh, most wondrous group on, on this planet. And that, that probably is the most important thing to me. Uh, throughout my years, I've traveled to every, every place on this planet, some of the godforsaken places. And uh, in the early years at Garmin especially, and, and, and Gary Burrell and men, and Gary especially said, we got to have businesses everywhere. So I was a, I was a traveler. And during that time, <clears throat> uh, Pam, my wife, uh, <clears throat> what is it, 47, 48 years? And by the way, we're not really that old. Uh, <laughs> she, was, she has been the uh, matriarch of the family. She's kept things uh, running. The grandchildren first and everything. There isn't a day goes by there in the holiday. We're sending gifts. And then my children. <clears throat> Sean, Kelly, uh, so proud of him. He is a uh, senior electrical engineer for Intel. Uh, he has a wonderful family, two boys, wonderful wife. My daughter, uh, Shannon, uh, single mom, three wonderful children. She's an ICU nurse at uh, Kansas University Medical Center. And my youngest son, <clears throat> Brian, uh, is a neurosurgeon in uh, uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, St. Patrick's Hospital. His lovely wife, Holly, is with him today, and uh, she's a doctor as well. And it was Pam. It, if, if you think these kids did well, it wasn't me. I'd just come in every once in a while and say hi. And, uh, but uh, a wonderful family. Um, last night, about 3.30, I... Uh, I came to a, an awakening, I guess, and I decided to say a, <clears throat> a different, a, a different uh, path here in my, my talk today. Uh, <clears throat> my, my last 40 years, uh, 20 at King Radio uh, and then 20 at, uh, at Garmin, I, uh, I believe very much in the, the, the saying, I'm not, I, I'm embarrassed, I don't know who, who said it, but you are the sum of your total experiences you have in life, whether it's family, your professors, your teachers, your educators, uh, and especially the people that you interface with day after day. And I was privileged to work with some of the best in the industry. And um, through those, the, the, the long period at, at King Radio with uh, Ed King, Bob Cox, he was my mentor, and many of you probably don't know Bob. Craig Christie, who you saw in the video, a wonderful hero of mine. Uh, Bob Dunn. Uh, they taught me in the very beginning about how important the product is, how important supporting the customer, and how important it is to take care of your employees. I learned that. Gary Burrell and men <clears throat> who worked at, matter of fact, Gary worked at King for uh, 23 years. Men was there seven. They left right after the Allied Signal acquisition to form Garmin. And uh, as you heard in the video, uh, there was no saying no to Gary. Uh, I was recruited by Gary to come to work there. And uh, what a wonderful place. It was, again, uh, the product is everything. Keep the customers happy and take care of your employees. I, uh, 
I wanted to mention uh, Duncan Aviation was mentioned, and I, I've always been in the OEM side or the, the manufacturer side of the world, and so uh, while I've been very much involved with, with you, the dealership, I uh, hadn't had the, the privilege of, so to speak, working at the, at the grassroots level. And uh, Todd Duncan and Aaron Heichelman, chairman and president and CEO, Duncan, gave me a call right after I retired and asked me if I'd uh, join their board of advisors. And I can tell you it, it's so refreshing to see that the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and thriving in this industry. And <clears throat> that is not a unique company. All of you are unique out here. And, and I talk about these, these heroes, and I've got many others I could talk about out there that I've had the privilege of working with and for. And you think, well, is that the end of it? They've retired or passed away? No. This industry, this organization is an incubator of leadership. I can walk through here and point out to you the great leaders of the future or the great leaders of today. I was thinking, uh, I've got so much to say, but I'll, I'll get off here, uh, about uh, the associations that, that were shown here. And uh, the AEA comes first. Uh, I, I worked with them. I, I saw the greatness there and the leadership today in the AEA, Paula and her staff. And then Jack Pelton, EAA, uh, Gamma, Pete Bunce, incredible leader. MBAA, Ed Bolin, another incredible leader. These are great leaders. They are great leaders. They're the, they're the, uh, what, do, what do you, what was uh, John Travolta in that movie? The Guardian Angel or what was, it? what was it, Pam, you know. He was, um, well, I'm disappointed. But he was, a, <laughs> he was the guardian angel or whatever. And I believe the associations are, are very important to you. And they're the guardian angels of today. So if they need help on committees or they need your expert opinions and help to testify or whatever, your obligation is to help the industry. I want to thank the AEA Board of Directors, Paula and her wonderful staff, by the way, thank you, Debbie, for all the, you put up with me over these last few days. Uh, I want to thank them. I want to thank you, the membership, for this wonderful award and allowing me to work in your industry. Thank you. Aero News Network's coverage of the 58th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Dallas, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Now certified, Aspen Avionics Single Band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Avidyne provides innovative avionics solutions for general aviation aircraft, including the IFD-540 and IFD-440 FMS GPS NAVCOMs with geofill, hybrid touch, and full ADS-B capability. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, NAVCOM, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. The IntelliFlight 2100 Digital Flight Control System is the perfect complement to today's integrated flight decks and is certified on the King Air and Conquest. It will now interface to a single EFIS and a mid-continent SAM 302 unit for a low-cost, complete panel upgrade. Contact us at www.genesis-aerosystems.com.
An interactive links application is available in the Apple and Android app stores. This free app is a virtual simulation of the Lynx NGT9000 touchscreen cockpit display that lets pilots interact with the unit as if they had a real system in their hands. The app covers the entire Lynx family of ADS-B products, including features and options to help customers decide which Lynx model is right for their needs. True Blue Power Advanced Lithium Ion Main Chip Batteries feature proprietary nanophosphate technology. They deliver three times the energy density and are more than 40% lighter than lead acid or NICAD alternatives. RTCA tested, FAA certified, available to OEMs today. NavWorks makes ADS-B affordable. Certified or experimental, NavWorks gives you high-quality next-gen avionic solutions that dramatically increase your situational awareness. Check us out now on the web at www.navworks.com. The debate is no longer about upgrading GA aircraft with NextGen, it's about financing it. The NextGen GA Fund is about doing just that. Find out more at www.nextgenfund.com.